Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Terrence Crawford warns Vasil Lomachenko. I told y'all. Now, make sure you smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Now, Terrence Crawford fight week for him. It's a big fight week for boxing. Javante Tank Davis in the UK on Showtime. Gary Russell Jr. on Showtime. This is all Saturday. Andre Durrell on Showtime. And then also, you have Terrence Crawford going against an Olympian. Olympic gold medalist Felix Diaz. May 20th, all these fights go down. And I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good day of boxing. Now, I'm looking forward to Terrence Crawford HBO fight. Crawford is um, a pleasure to watch. I've watched him live, covered his fights, I've seen his media, I've been in his uh, gym in Omaha for his media day. The dude is a beast, and he really applies himself. So, I gotta respect that. Now, he said something, just to give you guys the backstory. Him and his team are in New York. The fight is happening at, at Madison Square Garden, the garden, right? So him and his team flew out from Omaha, and they're in New York now. Yeah, I think he got a light workout in, and he went and did a meet and greet. They spoke with, their, I guess they had a like a host asking him questions, and it was a reporter, Michael Woods, and they asked him. I guess Lee Samuels, who works for Top Rank, they asked him about Vasil Lomachenko. I guess Samuels said something to the effect of, after Vasil Lomachenko beat. Jason Sosa in DC, he, he really came up to me and said he wanted to fight Terrence Crawford. That's the goal, the Bud Challenge, right? And Terrence Crawford, this is not verbatim, but when it releases or whatever, it might be on top rank or whatnot, Terrence Crawford responded by saying, okay, tell him to come up to 140, and then when I beat him, then don't say I beat up on little guys. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to give my two cents and, and quick thoughts on that. I agree with him, and I told you this. I may, it's, it's so funny, man. I, I really enjoy my job because all the proof is there. All the past videos are there. I talked about this notion because after the fight, it was talked about that Lomachenko wants to come up to 35 and fight Flanagan and Garcia, Mikey Garcia, and then he wants to eventually work up and, and fight Terrence Crawford. And I told you guys that Mikey Garcia fight is very challenging to me. Flanagan, he could probably beat him. He, I would favor him to beat Flanagan. And he should stay away from Terrence Crawford. And it's funny because Crawford's saying the same thing. You should stay away from me. And I think initially Crawford, this is just me speaking for him. Initially, I think he took it as a joke. Like, like nah, I, he didn't see it as feasible. He's, I seen him in an interview and they asked him, what about Lomachenko? He's like, nah, he's too little. He's too small. You know what I mean? Just how Broner did to Javante Tank Davis. He was like, nah, Tank, you little. I'll beat your ass. You know what I mean? When they were beefing or going through whatever they were going through. And the funny thing is, I, I've already talked about this. Like I said, the, the proof is up. The videos are still up. I made a video last year about these radical weight class jumps and um, daring to be great. That's great to be great and legacy, but build a legacy in a division. You know what I'm saying? Crawford's doing that. He's like a couple clicks away. If he beats Felix Diaz, he has to go through one more person, one more motherfucker to become undisputed champion in a division, right? Build legacies. Everyone's so eager. Boxing is a business and there's not enough opportunities in big fights. So everybody's all rushing out of divisions when they only had like two, three fights maybe in that division. That's not how it works. Like you look at Shane Mosley, he jumped up two weight classes to fight Oscar, but how many lightweights did he plow through and knock out before he jumped up to fight against Oscar De La Hoya? You know what I'm saying? And that's what some of these fighters are doing. And now, albeit Lomachenko is a top talent, he's an elite level fighter. I really enjoy Lomachenko, but weight classes are in place for a reason because Crawford is skilled too. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about one guy has two gold medals and one doesn't, you know what I mean? Because you look at it, Canelo Alvarez, he don't have no gold medals. He didn't even really have an amateur career, you know what I mean? He started in Mexico fighting in clubs and stuff when he was like 15, 16, right? So Canelo Alvarez has really had to learn on the job. But guess what? He knocked out the silver medalist Amir Khan. I'll tell you that. I watched that fight, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not all about metal obviously medals are great you know what i mean but it doesn't equate to oddly harrison has a, has a gold medal deontay wilder has a bronze medal and deontay wilder knocked him out in the first round you know what i'm saying so 
medals matter and that's obviously a testament to how far you you went as an amateur but weight classes matter too like i said canelo alvarez no medal knocked out a silver medalist in amir khan because even though amir khan was doing well he got caught and canelo does have power and does have skill and then when you look at lomachenko he's very talented very squirrely busy and stuff but to me this is just my opinion his power is definitely overrated like you look he has less than 10 fights so if you look at i think he has like eight knockouts if you look at it it looks like he, oh he's, he's a phenomenal puncher but just from watching boxing i don't think he's i don't think that's his, his game and it'd be foolish for him to go into the fights in the future with that notion that he's this huge puncher because i don't think that's him you know what i mean again you could say whatever it's it's kind of premature to tell because he only has less than 10 fights but a lot of those knockouts is because he, he's busy and he's throwing a high volume puncher and the way i know he's not an immense puncher is because he hits guys with 16 shots in a row damn near and they're still standing if deontay wilder hits you with a right hand and a left hook you're probably asleep you know what i mean if he if he connects flush like Lomachenko does because Lomachenko has accuracy, you'll be sleeping or you'll be dead or something. You'll be in a coma. You know what I mean? And it, that's just how the game goes. Like if you're an immense, but Julian Jackson cannot hit you flush with consecutive shots. You know what I mean? You would have a brain bleed, and that's just how it is. So to me, that's an indication that Lomachenko's power is not there. But he does get the job done. He does TKO guys because he's in phenomenal shape. He's very squirrely, like I mentioned. He throws a high volume of punches. So in the end, he could get guys out of there because they grow frustrated. When you grow frustrated, a lot of times you can burn extra energy. Anytime your adrenaline gets kicked up or you're frustrated or you, you know what I mean? All that stuff can aid in fatigue and make you more tired because you can't hit the guy. You're trying to chase him. His defense is good. You're throwing punches. You know what I mean? So you, you almost like no moss. Like the Jason Sosa, he, he was clearly needed to knock out the win. Nicholas Walters was getting bullied. But at the same time, I didn't see those guys like drastically hurt and like to be honest this is just my honest opinion when walters fought donaire he was more hurt than when he fought the lomachenko even though he knocked out donaire and lomachenko knocked him out technically tko right you got to know boxing got to know what to look for donaire clipped walters maybe in the first round second round i don't remember what round it was and it buckled him and it luckily for him it was towards the end of the round but he was hurt. I think it was Donaire's signature punch. It might have been a left hook too. So to me, Donaire even has he has a lot more power, even though Rigonal beat him and stuff at that point when he fought Walters and stuff like that. And he was moving up. Also, I just I seen him I seen Walters more hurt in that fight than I believe. He kind of just retired on the stool and gave up and quit. Long layoff. Didn't take care of his body and gained weight and didn't know um Lomachenko would be so fidgety but that's different when you move up and wait you know what I mean like you could do that for versus the, the 130 pounders but each time you keep going up a division it's not necessarily going to be the same thing 135 I don't even know if he gets past Mikey Garcia and that's the god honest truth and that's not saying like oh Mikey Garcia is easy for anybody to get past but I do think Crawford's style is worse for Lomachenko than than Mikey Garcia's and Mikey Garcia's style ain't no joke either, you know what I mean? But the reason I say that is because Terrence Crawford looks to be taller than all of them, and he can switch to southpaw. Lomachenko is a southpaw, right? And I don't know, maybe Mikey Garcia can switch to southpaw too, but I'm talking about Crawford does it effortlessly at will, and he almost fights better as a southpaw. So some of those angles and stuff that Lomachenko trying to get off, that he gets off on orthodox fighters, might not work. And he did it with Gary Russell, another southpaw, but again, that's another guy at 122 or 26 or whatever pounds, right? That's not a 140 pounder who rehydrated when he fought Gamboa at 35, rehydrated to like 155. So I can imagine nowadays he probably rehydrates to 151 to 158, you know what I mean? So you have to deal with the skill of Crawford. You have to deal with him being ambidextrous. You have to deal with his ring IQ and boxing brain, his accuracy, his longer arms, his bigger frame, his power, 
His speed, his athleticism, I just don't see that being a good look for Lomachenko at 140. But, I mean, to each his own. If Lomachenko really wants that work, I would pay to watch it. I would watch it. I would try to cover it. So, that's just my thought. I don't think that would be good for Lomachenko's health to fight Terrence Crawford. So, I agree with his warning. You guys let me know what you think. Like I said, even at 135, Robert Easter, Mikey Garcia, Jorge Linares, I don't see those fights being quite as, quote-unquote, easy as some of his work at 26 and 30. That's just my opinion. Even if he beats those guys, I think he's going to have to work, and he might deal with more adversity. And the last thing I got to say is I don't like Lomachenko recent comments. He says Salido is a step back. How is fighting the guy who beat you in a rematch, how is that a step back? You know what I mean? Especially when Salido... He's always had losses, even when Lomachenko fought him. He lost to Mikey Garcia, lost to Gamboa, etc. He lost to Juan Manuel Marquez. He had a ton of losses when Lomachenko fought him. So the only thing that's changed is maybe he has a couple more losses. But if you know boxing, some of those losses shouldn't have been losses. Like when he fought Rocky Martinez in the rematch, I don't think that was a true loss. I thought he beat Rocky Martinez. And when he fought Francisco Vargas, that was a, a fight of the year nominee. And some people thought he beat. Francisco Vargas so my thoughts let me know what you guys think drop it in the comment section make sure you share the video like the video as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing off so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing